Good morning to you on this Maundy Thursday, a rather pleasant morning here in Sydney. Today's reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, beginning at the 36th verse. The Garden of Gethsemane. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. And he went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and said to Peter, So you men could not keep watch with me for one hour? Keep watching and praying, that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again a second time and prayed, saying, My father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them again and went away and prayed a third time, saying the same thing once more. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. Behold, the one who betrays me is at hand. Maundy Thursday is a very important day in our church year. Two very significant things happened on this day. Firstly, in the early evening, Jesus celebrated Passover with his disciples. Passover was a yearly celebration in which they remembered that very, very significant night when God rescued his nation, his people, from the grips of Pharaoh, from the land of Egypt, from all those years of slavery. It was there they had a Passover meal for the first time and then they went out and God killed all the firstborn in Egypt and they were finally free. So they would never forget they celebrated the Passover every year. During the Passover meal Jesus gave us a new memorial supper. He gave us what has come to be known as the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion. He took the bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup of wine and he gave it to them and said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. And then he said, Do this in remembrance of me. And from there they went out into the Garden of Gethsemane, where I believe that our salvation was sealed. Because at that moment, during that prayer, Jesus fully committed to the cross. Not my will, but your will be done. There's no greater prayer that we can pray in our lives than not my will, but your will be done. There's no greater place to be. Even if God will, God's will leads us into a place of suffering. We know that at the end of it, there is Easter morning. Jesus had to endure the cross, but then along came Easter morning. And if we believe in him, we too will have an Easter morning. Our resurrection will come on the day when he comes to get us. Our graves will be empty. We will rise to a new life. May that fill us with joy and hope today as we prepare to celebrate Easter once again. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love for us. We thank you that Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper is a place where we receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, reminds us of the forgiveness of our sins, and strengthens us for our Christian life. We thank you, Jesus, that you submitted totally to the Father's will, that you prayed, not my will, but yours be done. And through that, you had to endure the cross. You shed your blood so that we may receive forgiveness for our sin. But you didn't stay in the grave. The Father raised you on Easter morning, and you are alive forevermore. And we have the great promise that you are the resurrection and the life. 
and the believing in you, we too will one day be resurrected to a new life. Till that time, we pray, help us to stay committed to you. Help us never to lose focus, but to trust in you. On this day, Lord, we pray again for your mercy upon this world. We pray that you would stop this coronavirus. We pray, Lord, that you would be with the dying, that you would comfort the mourning, that you would heal the sick. We pray for our doctors and nurses and all the wonderful people that are doing such a great job. We pray for our governments. We pray for all in authority. We pray, Lord, that you would give them strength and wisdom. We pray that people would obey and that people would listen and that people would do the right thing. But we also pray that every heart would turn to you and that lost souls would find their way to you. We ask your blessing upon this day and we join together in praying the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts, your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. May you have a blessed Maundy Thursday.